Welcome to worship at Lake Harvey United Methodist Church on this second Sunday of January. I'm Pastor Mary Ivanov. We're in the season of Epiphany when we celebrate the coming of Jesus for all the world and give thanks for those aha moments when God shows us love and grace. I welcome you all here. I welcome those who are worshiping with us online today, and I invite those who are online uh, to have a candle nearby as we light the Christ candle this morning as we celebrate the light of the world and also. I uh, invite you to, to let us know that you're worshiping this morning with a comment or a heart or praying hands. Uh, it's good to know that we are worshiping together. Today we begin a series on faith and film, and I want to thank our Worship Connections team for, pre- for preparing this space. Uh, it's been a few years since we've explored faith lessons in a few different films all at once, and it promises to be a meaningful series. Uh, And so today I'd invite you to see a short video that we've shared before during this series, but it's a meaningful one. It's from Josh Larson, and it's called uh, Movies or Prayers. It reminds us that art and creativity offer us experiences and messages about the human condition and our desire to find meaning and purpose. So take a look, Movies or Prayers. God, make confession, and say our Abba Father. Yet the human instinct to reach out to God doesn't always fit into liturgy or religious routines. We offer quiet and simple prayers every day, hopes, worries, frustrations, and we all direct these gestures at an attuned audience outside of ourselves. God may not always be the name given to this unseen listener, but he's still the one who matters. Prayer can be expressed by everyone and in every way. In churches and chapels, yes, but also in places we wouldn't expect, like meandering paths, deep in the woods, and even in your dreams. Not only will films like Saved by an Angel and Amazing Grace, but also movies that aren't normally associated with religious meaning. Casablanca, Toy Story, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, The Wizard of Oz. Tough theologian Abraham Kuyper is probably best known for the answer. There is not a square inch in the whole domain of human existence over which Christ, who is sovereign over all, does not try and mind. Kuyper suggested that God's grace and his revealing truth can be found in the most unexpected places. In our attempts to seek that grace and experience that truth, we take unexpected forms. From the silent melodrama of Kuyper to the colorful animated extravaganza of say, Endless creativity is on display in the collaborative work of hundreds of film artists. And when the resulting movies honestly confess, genuinely mean, mournfully lament, and joyously celebrate, they serve as prayers. You see movies this way, you have to watch the movies. You have to accept that prayers can be unintended, that they can come from unbelievers, that even the howl of the movies is directed at God. In this way, we can explore movies as elemental expressions of human experience, as message boxes sent in search of someone who is near. Not only we express the joy in the lives of God's good people, Chinatown mournfully laments over the world is often fallen. Star Wars offers a pledge of obedience. The Wizard of Oz yearns to make confession. God listens to the whispered utterances of the devotee in the book of Luke. He listens to our movies too. Join me, you can remain seated as we center our hearts this morning. We're going to sing one verse of Jesus, We Are Here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. celebrate 
the light of the world and the glory of the Lord revealed in Jesus. And so I would invite you uh, to share a blessing with me this morning. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, if you take a moment with those near to you to offer a greeting this morning, and I'm going to invite Paul Powers to come forward uh, and lead us today. I would invite you online as well to offer a greeting and share the peace if you would like. And would you stand as you are able and we'll share our call to worship this morning. Please share along with me. Uh, Your part will be in the bold print. Um, We gather a community of faith in God's Word. We gather to celebrate that no darkness can extinguish light. To remember that love will always be more powerful than death. And to trust that peace will always be stronger than violence. We gather a people of faith in the light of God's world. We gather to be strengthened as a community rooted in Christ's love. We gather to worship God, to offer our praise to the one who calls us together. And so we'll sing the first five verses of O oh, Four A Thousand Tongues to Sing. You sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of the Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. He breaks the power of canceled sin, he sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for me. He speaks and is seen to his voice. New life the dead receive. The mournful broken hearts rejoice. The humble poor believe. Would you remain standing? The prayer confession. We have grieved your spirit by our sin. We have, we have not, not been steadfast in prayer. We, we have, have failed, failed to give thanks. We have quenched the spirit. We have ignored the word words of the prophets, we have abstained from every form of evil. Forgive us, O God, realign our will with yours, and fill us with your joy. Friends, as we come to God just with as we are, we also hear these words of promise and assurance. May the God of peace sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound now and to the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose light we celebrate and whose glory shines brightly. Give thanks to God. Our sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated. And I would invite those uh, young and young at heart to pay close attention this morning. I would invite you to say uh, good morning with me and know that uh, those who are joining us uh, online respond as well. So here we go. One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be together. So uh, I have um, uh, a special, he's, he's a shell. He's not a person, though. He seems like a person to me. Someone to introduce you to. Uh, this is the beginning of our Faith in Film series. And so uh, as we thought about which movies to, to focus on, uh, you may not have heard a lot about Marcel the Shell. Marcel the Shell has been around a long time, since 2010. He is an internet sensation. Um, in 2010, he was created by two people who were uh, actually, by, by someone who said she felt really small, and so she started talking in this voice, Marcel's voice, which I can't do, only she can do it, but um, have you ever felt small in a big crowd of people? Uh, anybody ever felt small in a big crowd of people? That's sort of where Marcel comes from. He, this uh, Jenny Slate is her name. She's somebody who's a, a comedian and a, a, somebody who does a lot of voices. You might have heard of her voice in lots of different uh, cartoons or, or such. Anyway, she uh, had this experience of feeling very small in a big crowd of people, and so she started talking in this voice, and uh, her, um, the person that she was with, his name is Dean Fleischer Camp, he said, you know, that voice needs a character. And so he started, he went to a bunch of craft stores, he said, and got a bunch of stuff, and decided that the character was going to be Marcel. A shell with one big googly eye and some pink shoes. And so, uh, this is Marcel, and um, Marcel was on the internet first, and in books first, but then there was a movie made about Marcel, and so that's the movie that we're going to focus on today. But Marcel is somebody who sometimes feels really small, now, because he is really small. But uh, in, in the film, we also learn that he's looking for friends and community, and that that's really important to him, and I think... The reason that that was so meaningful when I when I thought about movies that we could use is because that's what everybody's looking for: friends and community. No matter if we're older or younger, uh, those are the things that are important to us. We want people around us who we trust and uh, who are kind to us, and we want to be kind to them. And that's the same thing that we're going to hear about from uh, scripture. In a letter that Paul, the Apostle Paul, wrote to a church in a place called Thessalonica, which is in Greece, uh, where Greece is um, across the world. But he wrote a letter to them, and he talked to them about building community with each other. And you might be able to guess what he told them to do. Uh, he told them to be kind to each other, to encourage each other, to try to live at peace with each other, to do all the things that we know are really, really important. And it seems like every day we need to hear those messages again about uh, living in community and what it means to live in community together, what it means to live as the church together, right? To be the church in the world and to help others and to, to seek to expand, to grow that community so that everybody knows how much God loves the world. So I want you to think about uh, the next time you feel small, can think about Marcel uh, and know that even when we feel small, um, we know that we are important, that God loves us, that we have people who care about us. And uh, Marcel is, is all the time, most of the time, he's pretty positive. He's pretty optimistic. Uh, he has a lot of hope, and we're going to hear about hope in the scripture that we, we read today, too. Um, so uh, I'm praying for all of us to to continue to, to share with each other, to be kind to each other, to build the community that we want to be part of. And that happens in the church. It happens in the world. It happens when we're at school. Uh, it happens when we're at home. So um, building community is really important. 
gathering people around us who support us and who we can support, um, who love us and who we can love, who can encourage us and we can encourage too. So let's pray this morning together. Dear God, thank you for loving us, for calling us to care about each other, and we pray that you would help us build community with each other. Love each other, encourage each other, support each other, and really care about each other. Not just say that we do, but really care about each other. So be with us today. Uh, help us to look around and see the places where we can uh, we can share with each other and, and care about each other. And we pray all this in the name of Jesus, who cares about us always. Our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. And invite our choir to come forward. And the song that we're going to sing this morning is simply called uh, Peace. Uh, and in light of all that's happening in the world, uh, always, this is our prayer uh, for peace. God, help us to be peacemakers wherever we are. As we gather this morning, I want to invite you uh, to share your prayers. If you have uh, something that you want listed up on our prayer chain, you can write that down and put it in the 
offering this morning. You can send it as a message uh, over our live stream. Uh, the same is true for our God moments, where we share those moments when God's grace has been particularly powerful for us in this past week. Uh, we invite you to write those down as our witness together. They really become an important part of, of uh, celebrating God's grace in our lives. So again, uh, write those down, put them in the offering if you're here in person, send them in uh, uh, virtually if you can. We, we love to share those together. Uh, I want to remind you to check your uh, check on the, the newsletter for January. We have printed copies here if you want to take one today. Uh, it's also available on our website. The same is true for devotional materials. We have printed devotionals, but we also share those online every day on our Facebook page, and so that's a great way uh, to keep that uh, spiritual discipline going every day. I uh, want to invite you this afternoon to see the movie that we'll be talking about next week, which is Encanto. Uh, we'll be showing that this afternoon at 4 here in the sanctuary, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then the next couple of Sundays we'll have uh, the other movies that we'll be focusing on, so we invite you to be, uh, be here for those, Top Gun Maverick and Avengers Endgame. Uh, this week, though, I want to lift up the other opportunities we have to be in mission and ministry together. Uh, our next session of Grief Share begins tomorrow night, Monday night, the night at 6.30 in our fellowship hall. Uh, this is a grief support group that we have uh, offered since 2015, and uh, it is designed to, to support those who have lost a loved one through death, uh, whether recent or not. Uh, so uh, if you or someone you know might be helped by that, we in invite you to in come or invite uh, the people that you know to be part of that. Uh, we're grateful to be able to offer it to our church and community. Bible study opportunities this week, uh, all of those are, are, are back after a holiday break. So uh, Tuesday morning, Tuesday evening, uh, Saturday morning as well. Lots of opportunities to get involved, and it's a great time uh, to start. Always a great time to start. Uh, youth groups will meet on Wednesday night. Uh, we have our lunch bunch this week, Tuesday afternoon, 1230 at the Driftwood Cafe. All are welcome. Uh, just a gathering to have some fellowship together. So uh, if you are thinking about coming, we invite you, if you want to sign up, you can, or you can show up if you, if you find yourself uh, wanting to come that day. It's a great time to be together. And then our women's prayer group will meet this coming Saturday at 930. Uh, and then coming up next week, on Tuesday the 17th, we have our next brainstorming time for worship, where we'll be talking about uh, our February series on mountaintop uh, experiences. So uh, keep that in mind for next week. Uh, I want to lift up our social justice issue for January. It is uh, the fight against human trafficking. And uh, for those of you who might be familiar, in our community we have uh, the Lakeshore Human Trafficking Task Force. Uh, we have the HOPE Project, which is the recipient of our Noisy offering this month. So lots of organizations doing good work to combat human trafficking in our area uh, and uh, many that are doing that around the world. So uh, we lift that up as a prayer concern, but even more as a way that we can um, continue to be involved and, and put our prayers into action. Uh, so as we come to this time, uh, I want to invite you to look at the synopsis of Marcel the Shell with shoes on. It's in your bullet in there. Uh, but I first heard of Marcel the Shell from our daughter Anna, who had seen the video on YouTube. She was very excited when she heard that the movie was coming out, and she loved it, and she told me it was something that we could probably use in worship. Uh, that happens sometimes. Uh, my kids will say, this seems like something you could use. Uh, she was right. I watched it. I was a fan, too, and so I invite you to see the trailer today. For those who are watching online today, we can't live stream the trailer, but you can access it on YouTube with a link that will be provided. And so we'll be right back in about two minutes. Take a look, everybody.
great movie. Uh, I hope if you haven't seen it or haven't, uh, I, I shared the, the original YouTube link as well, so you can get a, a good sense of who Marcel is and what he's about. But it's uh, a wonderful film, and we'll talk some more about that a little later. I want to thank those who served at Supper House this week, and I want to lift up our Saturday Sisters group who blessed our community yesterday by putting warm weather items around town um, for all the ways that we've been in mission and ministry, for all the ways that our gifts support that I'm grateful. Uh, again, our noisy offering for this month will support the Hope Project here in Muskegon, uh, and I would uh, invite you to consider that as in your prayers as well as, as our giving. So this is time, uh, our time for offering, for giving back to God. You can uh, prepare your regular offering, put it in the plates here. If you're uh, here in person, you can give online at our website, like harborumc.org. Uh, all the gifts that we give, time, talent, and treasure, uh, are a part of uh, how we uh, offer our gifts back to God. So we're grateful to be able to do that. As we take this time, we'll hear beautiful music, and we'll also be able to read the God moments that were offered during uh, this past week. So uh, let's worship God this morning with our tithes and offerings. offer these gifts in faith and trust, knowing that we are called to be a community where we share with and care about each other and the world you love. Guide us in your way, O oh God. Speak to us once more your word of truth, that our lives may be filled with your joy today and forever. Amen. Friends, you may be seated. I invite us to hear these words, and I pray that God would open our hearts to the reading, hearing, understanding, and sharing of the word today. This comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning with verse 8. 
This is uh, Paul's word to the church there, so I invite us to hear it. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I like movies that make me think, especially when they surprise me. I went into Marcel the Shell already thinking this shell with a googly eye and pink shoes was pretty adorable. And you'll see him on the slide here. But I didn't expect that Marcel would offer deeply profound reflections and words of wisdom. So there's my part of my epiphany experience, that aha moment. God speaks through the creativity of others, especially when they share the truth of human experience. I know that Marcel is a character. Really, I know it. But it felt like he was a real person. With real emotions, real feelings, real struggles, and real joys and hopes. And maybe part of that authenticity that we connect with, that I connected with anyway, comes from the foundation of Marcel's story and and how he came to be. Again, that question, have you ever felt small? Have you ever struggled? That might be the question for all of us and the place where we find some common ground. That's where the whole idea for Marcel the Shell came from. It was 2010. Comedian Jenny Slate had just suffered some employment struggles in her life. And she was at a wedding with family and friends, many of them staying in a cramped hotel room. And she started talking in this small, unwavering, high-pitched voice. I can't do it. Like Marcel. But because she was feeling small in the midst of this big crowd... She and her then-partner, Dean Fleischer Camp, created Marcel initially as the star of a short video that they had to do for a friend, but then Marcel took off. They were surprised when he had a couple hundred views, and to date, now remember that was 2010, to date, 33 million views on YouTube. Not unlike the film's story, Slate and Placer Camp were offered opportunities for Marcel to star in traditional animation and action films from studios and networks, but they opted for stop-motion animation and a storyline which dealt with life's hardships, like grief and loss. The film, after they started production, took seven years to produce. Now, I started wondering if this film was more about community for all of us, not just Marcel. And after reading some commentary from the filmmakers, they wanted to say something important about our need for community and the loss that we feel without it. Now, keep in mind, they started uh, this movie seven years ago, so pre-2020, and yet how important that message has become, especially in the last few years. 
somehow, through his perspective on life and grief, Marcel reminds us that we need each other on a deeper level. On a deeper level, we're, we're called to community, and that's the message that the Apostle Paul shares with the people in Thessalonica, modern-day Greece, who had put their trust in Christ. Our faith calls us together as the body of Christ. And if there's one thing that seems to be important at this moment in time, this moment in history, it's the things that can bring us together. Now, Marcel made me ask some questions. How do we cultivate and nurture community in the midst of chaos? Has anybody felt the chaos of this week? It's felt a little chaotic, depending on what you're reading. This week has shown us some of the best of what it means to be a community that cares. How many of you know the name Damar Hamlin? Anybody know who I'm talking about? The player from the Buffalo Bills who collapsed last Monday night on the field. Carol just said to me uh, as I was sitting there, you know, that shows the power of prayer. She's right. The power of prayer, the power of community. His collapse in the middle of a professional football game brought some perspective, I think. And even in our community, a story about people stopping to help a young family who had been in a car accident made the news. We cultivate community by caring about each other, really caring. Now, for Marcel, in the story of the movie, there's a lot going on. He lives with his nana, Connie. You see a picture of her here. Her health isn't great. Her memory's failing. He's trying to protect her while figuring out how to navigate life without others to help him. He's found a connection with Dean, the new guest who's staying in the Airbnb where he lives. But he's also, to try, he's also trying to find his community that disappeared. And you'll see it on the front of your bulletin. It pretty much is common knowledge, he says, that it takes at least 20 shells to have a community. Steve Norton writes, rather than simply acknowledging that we need relationships, Marcel explores what it means to truly mine the depths of those connections. Without a doubt, there's a clear message about our need for community, but it goes deeper to focus on the need for authentic and real community. What does that look like in the church? What does it look like in the world? One of the most profound messages of the film for me was Marcel's response to the number of hits he received on his initial post when he asked for help to find his family and community. Now, there are lots of responses and likes and hearts and all the things that happen on social media, but almost no one offers him the help he's seeking. Sarah Welt Larson writes, rather than help Marcel in his search, influencers start using his house as a photo opportunity. Their photo ops are a transaction when they feel they're getting something of value, where they feel they're, feel they're getting something of value by being at Marcel's house while showering him with attention. And Marcel says something incredibly profound in that moment. That's an audience. It's not a community. An audience, not a community. And there's a difference, right? An audience is watching and consuming when I'm in an audience, I'm there to observe or to learn or to be entertained. I'm not usually there to make a big commitment or invest myself in what's happening. But a community is different. In a community, I'm invested. In a community, I'm engaged. In a community, I care about what happens to others because it affects all of us together. Marcel grieves the loss of his community, even as he clings tightly to Nana Connie, and he wants connection with people who really care about him. He doesn't just want hits on a screen. Olivia Bardo writes, Marcel knows what community should look like because he had, he had and lost one. He understands that community should, just as Paul says in Galatians 6.2, bear, bear one another's burdens. Community needs to be active, sacrificial, and loving. And each member, she writes, fills an important role and participates as their full authentic selves. Here, you don't have to carry your burdens alone. 
Marcel shares with Dean all about his parents and friends and neighbors who have gone as they're making the documentary. But there are two other profound moments where Marcel challenged me about community. One is when Marcel confronts Dean about Dean's lack of sharing after he's shared so much. Marcel reminds us that real community does require us to create safe spaces where we share, where we're vulnerable, where we trust each other. And if I'm honest, that's really what I see and where I see the church at its best. Where are the places that we find that as the body of Christ? We worship together, but then there are those small groups and those experiences where we find those closer connections, and they are important. There's another profound moment when Marcel asks Dean a pointed question. Have you ever thought about taking the time to connect with someone instead of making a movie about them? Marcel challenges Dean to consider his own connections and his need for community, even as Dean has just been through a breakup. I had an interesting conversation with a friend this week as I was telling her about this series and about that uh, issue around audience versus community. And she and her family have significant time and investment in online communities. And she challenged me to consider the possibility that online communities can be important avenues for people who are seeking authentic connection. They can fill a need when we truly care about and invest in each other. And for her and her family, it really is a community, not an audience. But she said it takes investment. It takes engagement. It takes time to cultivate it, cultivate that. So it made me think a lot about what it means for our life together as the body of Christ. Certainly the church looks different than it did many years ago. It looks a little different than it did three years ago. The word, the word going around now is engagement. How are people engaged in ministry together? And maybe it's a challenge to think about new opportunities to connect with others. Even in this moment, there are people worshiping with us in different states, in different countries. Not an audience, but a community of faith by God's grace. And I wonder what the Apostle Paul would think about all of this and would say about all of this. First Thessalonians is probably his earliest letter to the church. Scholars dated around 50 A.D. or so, 20 years, roughly, after Jesus' resurrection and ascension into heaven. The population of the church was probably a majority Gentile, and Paul writes to encourage them in their faith. A lot of the letter, if you read all five chapters, a lot of the letter speaks of Jesus' return, which they thought was coming any day. In the meantime, Paul offers them instructions on how to live faithfully as a community of people who follow Jesus. And at least for me, as I read over 1 Thessalonians 5, it's worth just taking that scripture and putting it up somewhere, the reminders of who we're called to be. Put on faith and love, the hope of salvation. Hold one another in love and live in peace with each other. Encourage each other. Help those who are weak be patient with everyone. And then there's that verse, those three verses, in fact, that are powerful. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Powerful words as we think about the challenge to be a community of faith. We know that their lives in Thessalonica were threatened as they sought to remain faithful to Christ. Paul had planted the church there. He was run out of town and then continued on his journey to share the gospel. And so these new followers had questions. Many of their questions were centered around death and new life and salvation and Christ coming again. And so that's reflected in the letter. Their traditions didn't claim the same promise of resurrection and eternal life but their faith in Jesus did. So Paul assures them that we share in the promise of Jesus' resurrection, and that's good news. They didn't enjoy the freedom to worship freely without persecution. Paul really wanted them to cling to the hope they had in Jesus, and for them, that wasn't a platitude. It was life-giving and much-needed encouragement. And maybe it can be the same for us. 
And maybe that's the connection because Paul says that the hope we have matters and community matters. Living in peace requires patience and understanding, which requires us to talk to each other, to be in community, encourage each other, he says. If we think about what community offers us, maybe it's rooted in that reality of caring about each other first. We really have to care about each other to create community. But maybe it's also about belonging and grace and comfort and safety and accountability and trust and ultimately love because there's something to be gained from community for us. There's something we need and we know that we need it especially when it's missing. And it's not just for us to take, it's for us to engage in and give. Community is reciprocal. Community means that we give and take, that we care. So back to Marcel for a minute. After the letdown of that internet experience of feeling like there was just an audience and not a community, Marcel is invited to tell his story on 60 Minutes, which is his favorite show. And so he gets to see and meet Leslie Stahl. This is where community is nurtured as people hear him and reach out to help him find his family and community. They actually respond to what he's asking for. So there's a happy ending in a sense, but also a sense that Marcel has encouraged Dean to be more open to the people in the world around him. Who would have thought a small shell could do that? Ultimately, Dean and Marcel are friends who have found a connection. As we're living in this season of Epiphany, when we celebrate God coming in Jesus for the whole world, for that promise of salvation, that gift of salvation that can be ours in Christ, that is ours in Christ, there's also this call to community. The reality of God's presence is most visible when we're at our best as the body of Christ, looking to Jesus to lead us knowing that our faith calls us to love God and love each other and clinging to hope that God is at work all the time. And we've seen it. We see it in those moments of prayer, people praying for someone in need, people helping. We see it. We know it's there, and yet we need to celebrate it, focus on it, and help it to nurture us in faith. In all of it, caring deeply, about each other because it matters. And so you'll see a picture of Marcel's community after he's reunited. More than 20 shells. And some other things too. There's a pretzel back there. All kinds of stuff. What does it mean for us to be called to community? To really care about each other. To know that it matters. The prayers that are offered people we know and people we don't know, they matter. They matter all the time. The help that we offer, the small acts of kindness, the small acts of grace, they matter. And we know because they matter to us. They matter to the world, too. So as we pray today, as we let those words from Scripture settle into our hearts as we're challenged to really care about each other, to encourage each other, and build each other up, and live in peace with each other. As we think about what it means to rejoice always, to pray continually, and to give thanks in all circumstances, I would invite us, as we prepare to pray together, if you would just remain seated, we'll sing the first verse of What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Thank you. 
gracious and eternal God, the ancient words of Paul echo in our souls today. We are much like the people of the early church, seeking answers, wondering what it means to be a community, wondering what it means and how we can best honor our commitment to Christ. We want to have glimpses of the future so that we might know that we are secure. We want to have the security to know that tomorrow will be all right. We want to have life all buttoned up and figured out so there there will be no surprises. We want you to rid us of anxiety and worry and fear. And we want those things that are happening around us, the chaos, the violence, We want them to end. We want to know that when the great call comes for us, we will be safe, and we want all darkness and uncertainty removed from our lives. And yet you call us to rest in your care. Hear the prayers of our hearts, but help us to hear you in those quiet moments, too. Open us to you in this new day and new year. Help us to make room for blessings. Help us to be open to learn lessons, even if they come with challenge. Give us patience to wait on you and watch for opportunities to give and serve. Lead our spirits to find the courage to say, all will be well because we are yours. Lead us to find the ability to live one moment and one day at a time. Lead us to serenity and a peace which which the world cannot give, but only you can. Show us how to be fulfilled without more stuff so that we can truly understand what it means to be blessed and so that we can be a blessing to others. Lead our spirits to know that with your power we can cope with whatever surprises life presents to us. And lead us to know that we are destined for your redeeming, that salvation is a gift. Lead us to know that whether we are awake or asleep, living or dying, we are yours into the ages of all ages. God, hear the prayers that we pray for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our community, for places where people are grieving and suffering, for places where people are hungry and hurting places where there has been violence and death, for our community, for our country, for our world. We offer prayers in the name of Jesus, the light of the world, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, at uh, near the end of the movie, when... Marcel experiences a loss. He plays Amazing Grace with a piece of curly pasta. And Olivia Bardo writes, Marcel plays Amazing Grace as his, with the pasta as his instrument. Here, Marcel is situated somewhere between his mourning for what's lost and his unabashed hope for what could be. And it's an astonishing place to begin again. As the hymn goes, she writes, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Finding and forming community takes bravery, wonder, and creativity. It was grace that taught, that brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. Would you stand as you are able, and let's sing together the first two verses of Amazing Grace. Love. 
God of peace, sanctify all of us. May we know what it means to be called to community. May we know the blessing of salvation in Jesus. And may we know the importance of sharing that blessing wherever we are. Friends, may the God, may God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with you and abide with you from this day on and forevermore. Go in peace and make peace. Amen.